this morning with the full presence of God. This morning, if you came with a purpose of poison, you have to just clap your hands, stomp your feet, and tell the Lord that He is awesome. Somebody say, you're awesome in this place. <laughs> tell the Lord, you are mighty in this place. Say to the Lord, you are powerful. Come on, let's tell him, you are awesome. Come on, say, you are awesome. Come on, tell him, say, among us. Let the joy of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Hallelujah! Come on, sing hallelujah! Hey. Come on, horns, play one more time! Hallelujah! goes like this. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. 
Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, I want everybody to sing. Let the glory. Let the glory of the Lord rise among rise us. Among Let us. the glory. Let the glory of the Lord rise among rise us. Among Let the us. praises of our Joy of our King, rise among us, let it rise. We're gonna sing that one more time. Let the glory of the Lord come on, say it. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord.
glory of the Lord rise among us. He's an amazing God. How, how many know this morning that he's an amazing, amazing God? Hallelujah. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. He's an all powerful God, all powerful, untamable. Awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who sees light in boats and tell them where they should go? Or sees heavenly storehouses laden in smoke? Who imagined the sun and gave source to its light? Sees it to reveal us the coolness of night. None can find it. Is probable. It is probable. And then you place, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing. You are amazing. God. Come on, sing all powerful, untamable. Come on. 
unto the Lord this morning. How many are here purposed in your heart to give thanks unto the Lord Most High Jesus Christ? In everything we are supposed to give thanks for the Bible says we enter into his gates with thanksgiving 
and into his courts with praise. The Bible also declared us, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercies endure forever. How many people we have this morning that are willing to just lift up your hands before God and give him thanks? Hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord. Somebody cry out and say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to take a little time right now to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I just want to take a little time right now to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done. For all you've done for me. Come on, it's a very simple song. Say hi. Tell the Lord, thank. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's worship before the presence of God. Say, thank you, Lord. Somebody cry and say, thank you, Lord.
You've been so good to me. You've been so good. If he's been good to you, you cry out to the Lord.
air. Just wave them. Come on, come on. Come on, we lifted up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
hands. Put those hands in the air. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, wave those hands in the air this morning. I don't know what you came to do, but all I want to do is worship Jesus. We were created to worship him. Oh, God, that's what we want to do. Oh, that's what we want to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, that's all I want to do. Oh. Oh. Jesus. All I need is you. Oh, all I need is you. You said you'd bring me through. And I know all I need is you. Come on, sing it with me. All I need, all I need is you. Oh. You come through, you said you'd bring it through, and I know all I need. Can I get some? Can I get something on the mic here? All I need is you. All I need is you. Oh, Jesus. You bring me through. You said you'd bring me through. And I know all I need is you. Can I get somebody depending on Jesus? Say, all I need is you. All I need is you. I don't know about my neighbor, Lord, but oh.
lift your hand if that's all you need is Jesus. All I need is you. <laughs> uh, can I get somebody to sing it this morning? All I need is you. My way maker, my burden bearer. All I need. All I need is you. My heavy load carrier. All I need. All I need is you. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus this morning. How many say that's all you need is Jesus? How many of you know that's all you need is Jesus? Come on, applaud the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody here for the first time and speak the word? Your first time, your first time, lift your hand up high. One, two, three. Anybody here for else here for the first time? Keep your hands lifted till we put something in your hands. God bless you on behalf of Pastor, myself, the elders, the deacons, the members. We welcome you to Speak the Word Ministries, the fastest growing church in the Caribbean where Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Congregation, just go around, hug on somebody, love on somebody. Don't forget to greet and hug the visitors. Hallelujah. Ooh, yeah. All I need. Oh, God, you're all I need.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody clap their hands because they have the victory this morning? We have the victory in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Lift up both of your hands and confess with me. Say, all my needs are met. I'm out of debt. I have much more in store in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands again. Come on, say, all my needs are met. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, say, all my needs are met. I'm out of debt. I have much more in store in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, all of your needs are met. You are out of debt. You have much more in store in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Thank you, praise and worship team. If you'd grab your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 2, we have a lot of business to take care of this morning. Amen. That requires your utmost attention. Amen. For what the Spirit of God is going to say and what he's going to do. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. It is so important that everyone listen here today. A lot of things sometimes that is said, it is transported back to others that is completely not what I said. So today is one of those messages, amen, this morning that you must listen and that you must carry back the right message, amen, to whomever that you're going to send it back to, glory to God. We must have the right message. Amen. Genesis chapter 2. This morning, amen, is we're going to talk about same-sex marriage. What side are you on? We got to find out what side you on. Amen. What side are you on? Enemy has done a great job, amen, in accepting it as normal when it's not normal it's not normal it's not right and we as the body of Christ that is the light of the world we must stand up and make a difference for Jesus Christ glory be to God can somebody agree with me this morning I'll read aloud you follow along with me amen help me JC it's still not right It says this in verse number 18. And the Lord said, it is not good that man, that's male, should not be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. Sometimes a man by himself can cause a disaster. Glory to God. And out of the ground, help me, John. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought unto them Adam. See that he would call them, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was named thereof. And Adam gave the names of all the cattle and all the fowl of the ear and every beast of the field. But Adam, there was not found a helpmeet for him. Say helpmeet. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh stead thereof, and the rib which the Lord had taken from him, he made him a what? Say it loud. A woman and brought her unto the what? It is the constitution of where marriage starts. God brought a man and he put another woman with the man. He didn't put two women together 
he put a woman and a man. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. Y'all don't have to worry, amen. I can handle myself after today, amen. I can handle myself after today. I want you to notice something. Help me, John. I'm still hurting. I want you to notice something, Christians. On television, no preachers outside of John Hagee is willing to touch it. They'll preach prosperity all day, and I love prosperity. They'll teach faith all day. They'll teach about going to the next level, but nobody wants to touch the same-sex marriage. They've heard it many times, but they're running like cowards because they're afraid of who is going to leave. Whoever got to leave got to leave, but we're going to stand for righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to this. We ain't done. We just starting up here. We, we just starting up. Amen. It says this, and Adam said, thank you. There is now what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called what? Because she was taken out of M-A-N, man. Therefore, said therefore, shall a man, M-A-N, male, leave his father male. And his mother, female, and shall cleave unto his wife, female, and they too shall become not two flesh, but one flesh. In the day in which we're living in today, people are trying to cram down your throat that you must accept this nonsense. But you and I, we know better, and I'm here to encourage you to stand up for righteousness. Tell your neighbor, stand up for righteousness. Come on, tell them, stand up for righteousness. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, stand up for righteousness. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that this word will come forth with purity, with clarity, and understanding. I thank you, Father, that every negative word that would be spoken against this word, let it die and never produce fruit. Let the people of God defend your word today. Not defend a man, but defend you, Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may have your seat in the presence of our life-changing King, Jesus Christ. The issue of same-sex marriage is an issue of how far can we go before somebody says something. What preacher is going to stand up? I don't mind standing up. It may separate me from some. It may join me to others. But Pastor Dexter Skeppel stand up for righteousness. And if a pastor is liked by everybody, something is wrong with his message. If everybody likes his message, and his message is how you're going to be blessed, and how God is going to increase you, and how God is going to favor you, and how God is going to do this. And we love those messages. I've taught those messages, and I'm going to continue to teach those messages. But every message and every pastor need to come with balance. That's what the pulpit is all about. And today we want to talk about, amen, which side are you on? Because I feel in my spirit, in my prayer time, that some of you all are slipping. You are slipping. And I'm here to unslip you. <laughs> oh, I'm here to unslip you. There's a word that I want you to write down as we go through this teaching here today. It's first of all, I want you to write down the word LGBT. L-G-B-T. It's an acronym. L-G-B-T. L-G-B-T. It's an acronym that's been thrown around, and it's thrown around in our news media. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Boy, CNN is going as far as they can go. 
before they was they were they were watching they were, you were watching with two men were holding hands now they got two men kissing now they got two women kissing see it's because the the, the name of the game is to desensitize you so that you can it can look normal to you and that you can accept it amen in the name of Jesus but a sin is a sin I want you to write down the word DOMA. It's D-O-M-A. It's another acronym as we go through because I want you to see something here today. And I want you to see the word DOMA. 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 D-O-M-A. It was established in September 21st, 1996 by our beloved president, President Bill Clinton. Then he signed into... Legislation to make it law, DOMA, Defense of Marriage Act. That's what it means. Defense of Marriage Act. It means simply, it means that every person, amen, that is going to be recognized by the federal law, it must be one male, one female. It only can be one male, one female. Signed it at September 21st, 19. 96 it became law when the president of the united states of america becomes president most of you have seen it before by many other presidents they put their hand on the bible am i correct okay and they make an oath of office am i not correct and they make an oath of office to defend the United States Constitution. Whatever is in there, they make a pledge that I am going to defend it. It must be defended. Not to abhor it, not to oppose it, but to defend it. In May 10th of 9th of 2011, if I'm not correct, Something happened that was historic that went right under our nose. Thank God for YouTube. Whoever made YouTube is going to heaven. Glory to God. Let's play the video. Are you ready, Elder Small? I want you to listen. It's seven minutes, 52 seconds. And I want you to listen to the language that's in the video by our president, President Barack Obama. Play the tape. Turn up the volume. Stop it. Stop. Volume. All the way to the front. Start from the top. This is important. There we go. ABC News. Robin Roberts. This is an ABC News special report. Turn up the volume. Come on. Calling John Joseph. Anybody knowing and seeing John Joseph? Tell him report to the audio. There you go. Gay marriage. That's right. The White House. There you go. Questions this week in the wake of Vice President Trump's announcement of gay marriage on Sunday. North Carolina becoming the 30th state yesterday to ban gay marriage. The president made the news in an interview with our friend and my GMA co-anchor, Robin Roberts, down at the White House. So let's go right there, Robin. George and Diane, based upon what you just said, yes, the vote last night in North Carolina, what Vice President Biden said earlier in the week and what his press secretary, uh, Jay Carney, said yesterday and that the president would speak for himself on his position. So I asked the president, does he still oppose same-sex marriage? I have to tell you, as I said, I've, I've been going through an evolution on this. Listen week. to the words. Um, I've always been adamant that uh, gay and lesbian uh, Americans should be treated fairly and equal. Uh, and that's why, in addition to everything we've done in this administration, rolling back Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, so that uh, you know, outstanding Americans can serve our country, uh, whether it's no longer defending the Defense Against Marriage Act, which uh, tried to federalize uh, what has historically been state law. Uh, I've stood on the side of broader equality for uh, the LGBT community. Um, and I had hesitated on gay marriage uh, in part because I thought civil unions would be sufficient, but 
that was something that would give people hospital visitation rights and uh, other uh, elements that we take for granted. Uh, and uh, I was sensitive to the fact that uh, for a lot of people, you know, the, the word marriage was something that evokes very powerful traditions, religious beliefs, and so forth. Um, but I have to tell you that over the course of uh, several years, as I talked Stop the to tape. Stop, stop, friends, stop, stop family. it. He said over the course of several years. He's only been in office at that time three years. So what is several years is he talking about? He just got in office. He's talking about over the course of several years. I want you to listen to this language. This is our president of the United States. This is our first black president. Go ahead. And neighbors, uh, when I think about uh, members of my own staff who are incredibly committed monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships. Stop the tape. Who are raising stop, kids together. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. Did you just hear what he just said? He deliberately hired people that was that way. Because when you get hired in the White House, there's a process called vetting. They ask you every question for the exception of how much hair did you have on your head. They ask you everything. They know who they get before they get it. This is deliberate. This is willful. This is calculated because there is a motive. And I'm getting ready, and I'm getting close to tell you the motive. Go ahead, play the tape. I need you to hear it. Go Think ahead. about uh, those soldiers or airmen or Marines or uh, sailors who are out there fighting on my behalf. Uh, stop. Feel stop, stop. Fighting on my behalf. On his behalf? I thought it was the United States. It's not your behalf. You're just the president. You get to be removed in a couple of days. It's not your staff. It's the United States of America. This is not your behalf. Run the tape. I'm, go I'm helping you. Even now that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is gone because... Stop! Let me explain what Don't Ask, Don't Tell means if those of you who are not in the military. Before, what it was is that if you're in the military, if you were lesbian or gay, you could not serve. President Bill Clinton came up with a great wording and he said, I won't ask you. And you don't, you can't tell me. So it's the, it turned around to be, don't ask, don't tell. Keep going. Uh, they're not able to uh, commit themselves in a marriage. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that, um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Wow. So once again, the president supports same-sex marriage, stop and Diane and George, he stop, stop, was very comfortable. Stop. Wow. He affirms. But the president don't have the right to affirm what God has already declared. That's not right. It don't matter if he's black, Hispanic, green, yellow, or pink. Doesn't matter. You and I, before we came on this earth, there was already a God. And God had already declared what the rules were. We don't get to come in and change the rules because we are president of the United States if it's wrong. And that opened up a floodgate. It opened up the floodgate because the person in the highest office, if you go on to listen to the rest of his interview, he start putting it out on his daughters. Be careful what you don't want for everybody else. I am absolutely sure that the President of the United States, as beautiful as he is and his lovely wife that I love dearly and pray for all the time, is not looking forward to someday that their daughters walking down the aisle with two women. I'm sure they're not going to be excited about when it comes time for their daughter to get married, to walk down the aisle, both women hand in hand and kissing at the altar. I'm sure, I'm sure that that's not what he wants for his daughter. But yet still, he wants it for your daughters.
Here is my question, and let's go to the Bible, and let's go, because I need you to write down four things as we go through this here in Scripture, amen, today, is that, first of all, you need to know that there are a lot of preachers that are afraid to be criticized and ostracized and pulled down and talked about. A lot. So they run. They hide. Preach nice, cute messages while we shout and jump, but yet the truth is that's in the Word they hide from it. The gay agenda has four things that they have done very cleverly that I need you to write down. First of all, their first agenda was is to make it feel normal. Make it feel normal. If you make something feel normal, then you make it feel right. Because I've made it feel normal. Everybody else is doing it. So what happened in the make it feel normal range, you have a lot of people that are in the media that is speaking to us daily are hardened, outright, outspoken homosexuals. They're in our news media. And before you know it, they, they, they'll bust out on you and say that I'm gay. Nobody asks you if you're gay. We didn't ask you that question. We don't want to know. We're not trying to figure out if you're gay. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they bust out and say, I'm gay. See, what they're trying to do now, the, the, the company that is the most, is the head that's leading the list of this thing is CNN. CNN loves this. Why? Because they want you to feel that it's something normal. It's something okay. So first of all, the first agenda is to normalize it. The second agenda is to change what it's called. Because if you change what it's called, then you have a different effect on what it is. So the first thing is to change what it is called. Well, the Bible calls it abomination. So if you change the word, you change the language, you change what it is. The Bible calls it an abomination. The third thing that they have done is they have made us be, become afraid to challenge it. If you dare say anything about us being together, how dare you? They call you questions like, you're homophobic. You are gay bashing. So after today's message, Pastor Skeppel is going to be called a homophobic. And he is gay bashing. And you know where it's going to come from? People in here. Not the people out there. People in here. Oh, yeah, Pastor Skeppel is homophobic. He's gay. He says gay people is this, this, is that. No, we're not talking about the sin. What we're talking about is people wanting to get married and calling it right. We're jumping way over. I'm jumping over whether, I'm not jumping over whether, whether we're dealing right. I'm dealing with now you want to get married. The fourth thing that they have done right, watch this, is to accept it as right and forbid anyone to challenge it. It is to accept it as right and forbid anyone to challenge it. So the President of the United States bowed under the pressure of making what is wrong and tried to issue it as right. The goal of the administration and the purpose of it is to federalize it. To federalize it means that everybody have to accept it as law. And the president put his hand on the Bible and vow to defend the Constitution. And in the Constitution and the law says that marriage is between one man, that's the law, and one woman. It's called Doma. It's already in the law. September 21st, 1996, President Bill Clinton signed it. Doma. One man, one woman. One man, 
one woman. You don't even think you have to say that in this day and age, that marriage is between one man and one woman. But you have to. And let me tell you something. The more the church stays silent, woo, the louder the world becomes. Because the church people are afraid to stand up in their offices and in their places. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's sin. It's wrong. Because guess what? If they say it, somebody's going to label them. You better pick what side you on. I told you before that I love, I love what those Muslims do. They are so militant about what they believe. They don't care who they step on. What they believe is what they believe. But Christians, they back into a corner. They let somebody push them in a corner and say whatever they want. So you stay in that corner and be quiet. Christians, we are too quiet. Christians, speak the word, Christians. You are too quiet. We're letting people run all over us, say anything they want, do anything they want without any repercussions. But I'm telling you, that era and that day is done. You say something, you're going to pay for what you say. You're not getting away with it because you said it or because you sing it. You think you're getting away with it? No, you're not getting away with it. You ain't going to shut me up and put me in some corner. Not this preacher. I'm going to open up my mouth. I don't care who come or who don't come. Amen. Glory to God. I'm sitting up and saying, if you want to fight, meet me out in the parking lot. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Amen. Glory to God. Some of y'all figure it out next week. Now, listen to this. Turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians because God has already established it to be what it is. We don't get to make up our own rules. You don't get to change the rules because you just came to this earth. You just walked on this earth. You want to change the rules. You just walked into this earth. Now you want to change the rules. I'm not talking about somebody who is struggling with homosexuality. I'm talking about the people who want to make it law and they want to ram it down our throats and say, take this. In the Bible, the word wife is mentioned 407 times. 407 times. Wife. Wife. Now, I got one question for my dear people who are on the other side of the argument. Who, how can there be two men walking down the aisle? Who is the wife? No, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, Mikey. Who is the wife? Gloria, help me, please. Two men walking down the aisle. Who is the wife? Two women walking down the aisle together. Who is the husband? Because in order for it to be a marriage, it must be what? A husband and a wife. Which one of you is taking the role of the wife? Ah. Let's go ahead in the Bible here, because some of y'all, some people mad already, amen, and the only person that's mad is the devil, amen, the devil is the only person that is mad here today, I'm not mad, amen, I'm happy, glory to God, I walk with my head high, somebody said to me just the other day, pastor, walk with your head high, man, you better not say that to me, amen, my head is already high, glory to God, you better say, lower your head down a little bit, pastor, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what you're supposed to say to a crazy person like me. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Now you help me now because, you know, I don't always get it right all the time. But sometimes for the most part I get it right. But not all the times I get it right. I just want to know if marriage is a husband and a wife, the President of the United States said he affirms it. You know, you don't have that authority. See, the President of the United States don't have all authority. God has all authority. 
Are you listening to me? God is the one that has all authority. So you and I don't get to set up our own shop and make up our own world. Amen. God made it. You better know what you believe in this day and come. This is the end days. Minister Small, this is the end days. I'm telling you, I am telling you. Do you know what Newsweek had after President Obama said it? If you look up Newsweek, Newsweek has President Obama, the gay president. Check it out. I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just telling you what was in the Newsweek. Newsweek said that President Obama is the gay president. No other president in the history of the United States has ever, ever, ever said statements like that. Oh, yes, when voting time comes, we want to vote. Oh, yes, I'm voting for that. He's the first black president. Well, we got to vote on, not on blackness, not on the color of our skin, but on the principle that's in the person's heart. Now, I'm going to say something here. I may offend some of you all, but it's coming to our legislature really soon. You watch what I'm telling you. You mark the words down. Remember, Pastor Skeppel said it. Somebody's going to be bold enough in our little U.S. Virgin Islands to bring it up. They're already floating with the idea, but they're not willing to bring it out because when they bring it out, oh, Pastor Skeppel is going to call their name. I'm going to call them by their first name and by their last name. Amen. Why? Because everything has a price. This message that I'm preaching has a price. I'm going to have to pay a price for it. But if, if you're a Christian, amen, you better be affirming that you got to know what price you're going to pay. Amen. Action neighbor, what side are you on? See, you know what? A lot of people have a side in church and another side when they get out in the world, when they meet their hidden friends. And their hidden friends say, if the people love each other, then why can they just love each other? Now, I'm going somewhere. Remember I tell you to write this word down, LGBT? We're cutting to that really soon, okay? So hold on to that. Really, hear what it says here. If you're there, say amen. Ephesians chapter 5, it says this, verse 22, it says, wives. Now, very few people in the gay and lesbian community could debate that a wife is a woman. They don't debate that, that a wife is a female, that it cannot be a male. He is talking about a female. Some of y'all looking to be crazy. I said he is talking about a female. Say amen. amen. A lot of y'all not saying amen. Boy, how y'all do this to me? Amen. I'm really on my way trying to teach this, and y'all are stopping me, looking at me crazy, like a wife is not a female. A wife is not a woman. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, he said this. He said, and Adam called his wife. And Adam called his wife Eve. That's Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. So it's evident that a woman can only be a wife. And if a woman can only be a wife, and it takes a woman and a man to be married together, to make a marriage, two men can't do it. Two men can't do it. Two women can't do it. I said two women can't do it. It says you can call it whatever you want to, but you dare not call it marriage. You can call it, you can put another name on it, but it is not marriage. You are going to be challenged. You are going to be called everything under the book. Why? Because of what you believe. We're here to represent the book. We're here to represent the Bible. We're here to represent the word of God. God, we're not here to represent ourselves. You're not here to represent yourself. You're here to represent what God said. Tell your neighbor, say, we're going somewhere. It says this, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband, male, is the head of the wife, female. Even as Christ is head of the what? And is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let, thank you, Lord, so let the what? The wives be unto their 
own husbands in everything. It says husbands, male, love your what? Wife, female, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself what? That he sanctified and cleansed it with the washing of the water by the word that he might present to it to himself a what? A glorious church not having what? Spot or wrinkle as such thing that you should be holy and without. When a man and a woman come together in marriage, it is something holy. It is a holy thing. That's why the Bible says marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the file and whoremongers God will judge. So God is making it plain that a marriage can only be between a man and a woman. You know, um, a friend of mine started a business years ago and she wanted me to um, to help um, people get married, you know, um, she would bring them down from the states, and and um, whenever they got here, she would, you know, tell me, you know, that all the things, and they put my name down as a pastor, you know, and I would marry them. And and I reluctantly agreed to do it, and I did it, and I, you know, I was I was like, Lord, I don't even feel comfortable. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit will just drive conviction over you, and and and. And the, how many, had the devil ever talked to anybody in here over the side? Anybody ever talked? No. The devil talked to me and said, man, when you get there, it's going to be two men. I mean, the devil talked to me. I mean, just talking to me. He said, man, I, I said, man, I'm, I'm going here and I'm walking into this place, man. And I'm saying, and, and I'm saying, I'm saying, why am I doing this? Why am I marrying these folks? And I don't even know them. I don't even know hardly their name. I don't know where they're from. I don't know nothing about them. And I'm marrying them. And I walk up in there, man. And I said, God, if you could just do me a favor, make it a man and a woman. That's all. That's a, I'm down to that prayer. If you would just make it a man or a woman, man, I would just be so happy. And I got in there, man. And it was, a, thank God, it was a male and a female. And I married them, man. And after I was done, amen, she was getting ready to give me the money. And I said, no, 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 no. No, I can't take the money. I said, I, can't, I cannot use my office as a pastor to marry people I don't know. Because in this day and time, I don't know who I'm marrying. I don't know under what condition they get married. And I can't do it no more. She said, Pastor, please. I said, trust me, there can be hundreds of other people that will do it. But I can't do it. Now, listen to me now. I'm going somewhere with this. God is going to put a conviction on your heart about what marriage should and should not be. Now, please follow this. When we get married and God honors our marriage, it's an honorable thing. And, what, and what, this, what this group of people are trying to do is they're trying to get us to dishonor what God is considering to be honorable. Marriage is an honorable thing. And it shows here in the word. Listen what it says this. It says this in verse 29. It says, this, in verse 28, it says, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. And he that loveth his wife, loveth himself. Two of the leading preachers was on CNN, Larry King, asking them questions. Where do you stand on same-sex marriage? Huffing and puffing. Dodging the question. I believe what the Bible says. Tell me what the Bible says, Mr. Bishop. Tell me, open up your mouth and say what the Bible says about it. Stop running. Stop hiding. Stop trying to dodge around questions. Answer the question. What is a marriage? Well, whatever the Bible says. That's not an answer to any question, Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop, that's not the answer to the question. The question is, what does the Bible say about marriage? The marriage is between a husband and a wife. Anything else is not a marriage. Why is it that a man of the gospel who have lived luxury as part of the gospel afraid to defend God? Why? 
Why is it that preachers can, can give you a message that is so good? I declare it. I decree it. Friday is a coming soon. Well, praise God. Why don't you tell us about marriage? Why don't you lay down the law about what God said about marriage? Why? Because we go for the feel-good stories and the feel-good book, but we dare not touch the subject that where God would ordain us to do. If you're going to be a preacher, you've got to take the good with the bad. You've got to eat the whole thing. If you are a Christian, you got to take the good with the bad. There's some things that you don't want to preach, amen, but you got to preach it anyhow because your job is to defend the word. Can somebody clap your hands here today? Defend the word. Or well, we can preach about prosperity all day and we claim it and we receive it in the name of Jesus. But when it comes down to sitting down taking about this, oh, we ain't touching this in the name of Jesus. We're afraid. It says this. It says this. For we are members of one body and of one flesh and his bones. For this cause. I, there it is again. Uh, th th there it is again. It was in Genesis chapter 2. Now it's in Ephesians chapter 5. For this cause shall a uh, uh, man leave his uh, father and his mother and he shall be join unto his uh, wife and they too shall become what one flesh it's in the word there is no question about what is in the word now with the lgbt community like the president of the united states said which is the lesbian gay bisexual and transsexual Let's go where he's going now because this is our president. This is where he's taking us. He's not just taking us with gay and lesbians. He's now gone to a whole, he's add on to other people. He slipped it in on you. He said it was gay. Then he said lesbian. Then he says gay and lesbian because if I give you the acronym and you don't know what it is, I get to slip it right past you. You don't even know what I just said. You just, you know, oh my goodness. But I need to bring out the definition. LGBT is lesbian. That's a female. Gay. That's a male. Bisexual. That is a male or female that, that enjoys both male and female. And transsexual is a male that has turned himself into a female. Now, he said, we will add them into the community right here. We will add them into the agenda. Now, listen to this carefully because you got to listen to me. Listen to me carefully. I'm trying to get you somewhere. The problem that they are doing, the thing that they're doing right now, is they're not, they way past the Christian church. They're not trying to get married because they're already doing that. The thing that they're trying to do is to adopt your children. So, could you imagine two men trying to raise a child? That is chaos in a house. My wife won't even leave me with champion more than 10 minutes. We'll be running all down the house, knocking down stuff, wrestling on the ground. Amen. Got the place like a complete chaos. Could you imagine two men? Raising a little girl? Could you imagine? I want you to see it in your mind what they want us to accept. And what they're doing is they're taking it and say, open up your mouth, Mr. Christian. Open up your mouth, Miss Christian. And I'm going to force it down your throat and say that it is normal and you must accept it. And it is the right thing. It can't be right, especially, come on, y'all just help me with this. Two men, some of you women know what I'm talking about. You don't want no big, I mean, glory to God. I remember, I remember. The first time Champion went to the bathroom, it was Haiti. And it was me and Pastor Frank. And when he went to the bathroom, I could smell him. I was like, oh, Jesus. And I'm saying to myself, I said, I'm not doing this. I'm saying to myself, I I'm not. I'm not doing I was looking for somebody to change him. But guess what? There was nobody to change him. So I had to change him. I was traumatized. 
Oh, y'all don't understand. Y'all do not understand what traumatization is, amen, until you have to change a baby for the first time. That stuff will traumatize you, amen, for years. I didn't know it could smell like that. I was like, oh, my goodness. When he was done, I mean, it took me like about 20 minutes just to change it because, I mean, I mean, it was, I was like, oh. And this was, I could never forget it, man. We had just come from the restaurant together, and I mean, it was champion of myself. We were just hanging out, father and son, we hanging out, amen. And then I look at it, oh, my goodness, he went to the bathroom. Mothers, you know, you ain't want to leave your child with no man for no long period of time. Hello, hello, especially no little baby. If a mother, any mother, you know you are, you want to know, man, he can't, you trying to get home as quick as you can. Amen, mothers? I'm trying to get home as quick as I can. I can't leave this man with his child. Mothers stay home for a reason, amen, because if men stay home, they will cause a disaster in the house, amen? Don't even eat right, don't even do the right thing. I would say this dearly, and I say this as humbly as I know. There have been so many fathers who have raised their child by themselves and done an awesome job. Give the Lord a hand clap for them. But there is no man that's excited about raising no little child. God has put in that mother the ability to deal with stuff all day long. I don't know, Mom, how you dealt with six children. I'm surprised that you are still sane. I got one, and he's driving me up the wall all by myself. Terry says she want a second one. I said, I can give you a dolly. I can buy you something, but we ain't going for number two. I got one of them that's driving me crazy all by myself. Glory to God. I'm telling you, a woman... Is, is from God, she has that ability to keep on loving and loving and caring and doing. Oh, man, it's in them to take care of a little baby. And to could you imagine raising, by you? I'm telling you, that's crazy. All by itself, it's crazy. Two men walking up to the adoption agency say, we want a little baby. You crazy. We should just arrest you for just being that crazy. We should take you straight to the psych ward. But that's what the president is saying. It is okay for them to get married, and it goes further. It's okay for them to adopt. Now, come on now. We just went to a whole nother level of craziness. That is crazy. That's crazy. We don't want two men raising no little boy. Now, I want you to listen to the language of the President of the United States. Roll back the tape, because you need, you need to hear this again. Some of y'all gonna say that I'm, I don't like the President. I love the President. He plays basketball, I love it. Plays golf. But this stuff that he's doing, it's crazy. I know there are a lot of us that we are for the Democrats. But some of the stuff that they believe in, some of the stuff that they're doing, just outright crazy. We got to be careful. It's dangerous. What the president of the United States is proposing is that anybody could marry anybody. I'm going somewhere. Next is going to be you can marry a horse. If I'm allowed to marry another man, if a woman is allowed to marry another woman, then I should be, if I love my horse, I should be able to marry my horse. Don't laugh, Brother Jarvis. That's not funny. This is a serious. This is a serious. Brother Jarvis, this is serious stuff. Come on. I expect of all people in the world for you not to laugh. Sister Jarvis, could you deal with Brother Jarvis here, please? Because he's laughing about marrying your horse. Amen? That means that you can marry your pet bull. Yes. It's called bestiality. Now, not, not because it goes, it has no limit, and Ray, it has no end. So that means now I can do whatever I choose to do. A man, a man now can marry his daughter. 
it's 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 now it's you you, you, you now now listen to this now you say no that's not what he means it's anybody it's open for anything to be done it's not just gay marriage it's whatever and whomever you want to marry whatever you want to marry so if you have your daughter and you and you fall in love with your daughter I marry my daughter if you if a man loves his son and they fall in love with one another sister Luke marry your son It's getting quiet in this Presbyterian church. Are you ready for me? Are y'all ready? Where did my people go? Where did my, pe my people always leaving on me, amen? Where's my people? John, help me. My people just left, amen, just left the building again, amen. They went on vacation, amen. Can my people come back, amen? He said yesterday and that the president no. would speak for himself on his position, so I asked the president, does we go. still oppose same-sex marriage? Here we go. I have to tell you, as I said, I've, I've been going through an evolution on this issue. Um, I've always been adamant that uh, gay and lesbian uh, Americans should be treated fairly and equally. Uh, and that's why, in addition to everything we've done in this administration, rolling back Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, so that uh, you know, outstanding Americans can serve our country, uh, whether it's no longer defending the Defense Against Marriage Act. Stop. Which, uh, tried stop, to federalize. Stop, stop, Don't defend the Constitution of the United States? You are picking a part where you do not defend? You have to defend it all. That's what you laid your hand on. That's what you said you were going to do. Keep listening. I want you to hear the rest. Uh, what has historically been state law. Uh, I've stood on the side of broader equality for uh, the LGBT community. Um, and I had hesitated on gay marriage, uh, in part because I thought civil unions would be sufficient, that that was something that would give people hospital visitation rights and uh, other uh, elements that we take for granted. Please listen carefully. Uh, Here we go. And uh, I was sensitive to the fact that for a lot of people, you know, the, the word marriage was something that evokes very powerful traditions, religious beliefs, and so forth. Um, but I have to tell you that over the course of uh, several years, as I talk to friends and family and neighbors, uh, when I think about uh, members of my own staff who are in incredibly committed monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together. Wow, you hear that? When I think Stop. about uh, those. Stop. Stop the tape. Listen. Soldiers or airmen Stop or Marines the tape. or Stop the tape. Uh, sailors who are. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. People in my administration who are in monogamous, monogamous relationship that are raising what? 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 Are you serious? So you mean that you are the president of the United States, you hired XYZ, you find out that she is living with another woman and have somebody else kids in there? Or a kid in there? And you say that it is right? And you don't do nothing with it? I dare to tell you it is something that he calculated to do it's not something that he just it just oh my good lord look what just happened Susie and Susie is together oh and they got little Robin in the house excuse me Robin it just came up just like that amen didn't mean to bring your name up like that I should use a Shaquita name amen but I know there ain't no Shaquita in the White House because Every person that is going to be connected to the White House is vetted. So they know who lives in your house. They know the male and the female. They know everything that's in there. So when the President of the United States say that talking to friends in his White House, he is lying. 
he already knew before. That's why you come into the White House, because we have to know who you are around. You have to be inspected by the CIA, by the FBI. You have to have a background check. So your background check tells me everything about you. So you don't do nothing that surprised me, because guess what? I already got the file on you. Rewind the tape a little bit. It's a lie. He knew exactly what he was doing. Knew exactly what he was trying to accomplish. And let me tell you something. Once you start from the top, just a little bit, guys. A little bit. Come on, play it. Play it again. Right there. Just a little bit. Just about two seconds back. I want to hear that part again. Together. Uh, when I think about uh, those soldiers or airmen or Marines or uh, sailors who are out there fighting on my behalf uh, and yet feel constrained, even now that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is gone, because uh, they're not able to uh, commit themselves in a marriage. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that, um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. So once again, the president supports same-sex marriage, and Diane and George, he was very comfortable in discussing this. We had other topics that we discussed, but the majority of the interview was on same-sex marriage, and he had a lot more to say about that. It was very important for him to say it himself and not have others speak on his behalf. And Robin, did he tell you anything about why he decided to do it today? Did Vice President Biden force his hand, or was that planned? Uh, I did ask him that, about what the vice president said, and also his education secretary, Arnie Duncan, also just recently uh, in support of same-sex marriage. Uh, the president laughed, and he said um, that this was a discussion that they had been having and that they were planning on having perhaps before the election, so perhaps uh, the vice president did, did jump the gun just a little <laughs> bit. But I asked him if he was angry at all with his administrators, uh, top people in his administration, uh, being so vocal, and he said absolutely not. He was not upset at all with them. Did you hear that? And, and Diane, there had been a lot of debate inside the Obama campaign for a long time about how to do this and when to do this, and there were many who were thinking it should I want you to hit a lot of part of this before story. the election, but in many ways the president also forced into a bit of a corner. You had those comments by the vice president, you had these votes. You know the president was going to be getting questions on this straight through to the election. And probably the, the big key, already his convention chairman, the Democratic leader in the House, mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi, a majority of Democrats were trying to put into the platform at the Democratic convention support for gay marriage. So the president also facing a big fight at his convention that he did not want to have. Right, but we should be pointing out that there are 30 states in this country that have laws now opposing same-sex marriage. Very and important. of course, his presumed opponent in the campaign, Governor Mitt Romney, opposes it. And I understand our Jake Tapper is standing by right there at the White House. What is the Romney camp saying? I want you to well, Mitt Romney was asked about this while campaigning today. Thank you. Uh, his response was that he's... So you're here at ABC News World Headquarters in Stop New York with George... Thank you. I want you all to see something that's very important here. What we're doing is that the president has advanced the agenda and he is making it faster than it should be so that we can slam it down your throat. Because if it's federalized, the 30 states that oppose it must automatically change. Because the next level of this agenda is to make it a hate crime for preachers to preach against it. In some countries already, the message that I preach today, I'm on my way to the jailhouse. I'm on my way to the jailhouse. They'll be right out there. Amen. Say, come on, Pastor, come put the handcuffs on. We're going right down to the jailhouse. Because you preach against, it's now to speak against it now, it becomes a hate crime. And a hate crime is to oppose anybody of any sexual orientation. Glory to God. In Leviticus chapter 18, I don't want to, I, got, I really wanted to read the whole thing to you, but we'll close with this. We'll close with this. It's going to be the hottest selling tape. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, Lord, this is going to be going. This worship team, come on back up. Amen. Glory to God. 
it's going to be a hot selling tape. It's people going to be saying, oh, my goodness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Play me a good worship song. Um, the best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come. Oh, we just start now, amen. Glory to God. You know Leviticus chapter 18? 18 and 22. You there? Glory to God. There's some heavy lifting today, amen? In the spirit. In the spirit, this is heavy lifting. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. I need you to know what the scriptures. I need you to highlight. I need you to circle this. I need you to ask your neighbor for a pen if they have. I need you to circle this in your Bible. Hallelujah. It says, thou shall not lie. It was sodomy considered sodomy for man or woman to lie. It says, thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Let's read it again. Thou shall not lie with mankind or the same man as with womankind. It is an abomination. In the book of Leviticus chapter 18, all the way through, God is laying down his law to the children of Israel and what is wrong and what is not acceptable. And it goes on to verse 23 because we need to read it. Yeah, I need you to see it in your Bible. It says this, neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shalt thou or neither shall any woman stand before thee a beast to lie down here too. It is what? Confusion. It goes more on and on and on. It's talking about in the Bible that human beings sleeping with animals. The agenda of same-sex marriage is not just for a woman and a woman to marry or a man and a man to marry. It goes way beyond that. It is for anybody who wants to get married to anything can get married and call it a marriage. And according to the word of God in which we represent, the Bible says that we are salt of the earth. We are salt of the earth. Lift up your Bibles, amen. Glory to God. Rokobo shanda rabakata rasata rabaka. Lamba baba sana. Rabo shanda rabo. Come on, lift up your Bibles. Come on, lift it up high. Come on, come on. When somebody comes against you this week, thank you. When they come against you this week, amen. Say, I stand on this word. When somebody come and oppose, amen, we say, we, we stand up against this word. And you are not bigger than this word. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you say it. I don't care what you hear in the media. I don't care how much senators that's against it, for it. I don't care where you stand. I stand on God's word. Father, we thank you. I pray over Christians today of this assembly that they will never leave this sanctuary doubting dubious, confused about where you stand on what marriage is. It's between a male and a female. It is between a man and a woman. It's not between two men or two women or a man and a horse or a man and a dog. No. Father, thank you for setting the standard and setting it right. That we don't have to doubt. We don't have to be dubious, confused, perplexed, or bewildered. We're not bewitched by the enemy. We thank you, Father, for the word of God that will come forth with power and authority. We give you praise and we give you glory, Father, for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus, as we lift up this word. Come on, lift up the Bible. Come on, Tony Singler. Come on. Come on. Easier to come. Come on, sing team. Come on. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. The best, oh, the best, best is yet to come. Come 
on, lift up your Bibles. Come on. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come. Father, we thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. That if they're in pain, a lifestyle that is outside of your will father we thank you Lord Jesus that we say that it has no power and no authority father to take control over their lives in the name of Jesus we ask father that you do something supernatural in their lives that you would release them from the sin of their past we thank you father that it's not the will of God for us to live in sin and sickness and disease we thank you father for the anointing that rest, rule, and abide in us now. We give you praise and we give you glory, Father. In Jesus' name. If you would hold the person's hand next to you, just rest your Bibles down for a quick second. Terry, can you come? Father, we seal every person here with the Holy Ghost. That we have picked a side and we've choose the side of righteousness. Because it's an easy choice. Father, we know, Lord Jesus, that this is a sign of the end times. That this is a sign that you are right around the corner, that you're getting ready to come back. That you're getting ready, Father, to bust the skies wide open. And, Father, we are excited about your return. And, Father, if you delay your coming, we know, Lord Jesus, that we rejoice in you. We rejoice in hope. And we thank you, Father, for pulling down the stronghold of the enemy. That he has no power and no authority, Father, over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can somebody give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Can somebody give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Can somebody sing along with us? Come on, come on. I close, no looking around, no moving around. Don't use this time, amen, to talk. Use this opportunity to pray. Those of you that are born again, that are saved, that accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, with your head bows and your eye closed. If you would pray, if you are a born again Christian, would you just pray for the person? Would you just pray in the Holy Ghost? Just pray, amen, pray, pray, pray. Because there are people, amen, that may be around us who have never given their lives to Jesus Christ or are not saved, amen, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for every person on the side of my voice who may have never given their life to Jesus Christ. And if they're in here today, Lord, that you would allow them to see your presence and to see your power here today. Holy Spirit, pull us out of sin. Sin has no power and authority over us. We give you praise and we give you glory, Father, for what you're going to do. With every head bowed, every eye closed, amen. No moving around, no looking around. If you're in here today and you've never given your life and your heart to Jesus Christ, and you want to do that today, yes, you want to be saved today, you want to give Jesus Christ your life, I want you to raise your hand high and say, yes, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. You're in here today and you're not born again. Or maybe you are and you're backslidden. God said, I want he's returned to you, amen, the joy of your salvation. Raise up your hand high and say, yes, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to come out of sin. I'm tired of living in sin. I'm tired of living in 
in the world. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Raise your hand high. I want to see who you are today. I want to pray for you, amen, before you leave this sanctuary today. Come on, lift it up high. Come on, lift it up high. I want to know who you are. You've given your life to Jesus Christ. Come on, pray. Pray, 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 saints. Pray. Come on, come on, come on. Pray. This is your time to pray. This is your time to pull down stronghold. This is your time to call things be not as though they were. Come on, call it into being. Come on, pray, pray, pray. You're in here today and you've never given your life and your heart to Jesus Christ. And you want to rededicate your life to God. Lift up your hand and said, yes, pastor, that's me. I want, to pray. I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. Come on, pray, pray. Father, we thank you for every person on the sound of our voice. And we acknowledge that you are the Lord of all. We thank you, Father, as the men and the women of God that would give into this ministry that will cause change. We give you praise and we give you glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Apostle Tommy from St. Lucia is going to be ministering on the second service. A man of God, amen. And I want to invite you, if your time is available, amen, for you to come and listen to Apostle Tommy. Amen. He is on his way to the church here in a few. Amen. That was going to be preaching on the second service today. Amen. It's um, all yours. Let's go ahead and receive our offering. Amen. Here today. Hallelujah. Let's get our tithes, our offering, our seeds, our gifts of love. As we're about to give into the kingdom of God this morning. Lift them up high. Father, I thank you for each person that will give in this ministry, which is good ground. As we sow our seed, Father, we believe that you meet our needs this morning. Father, I thank you there's increase, there's favor, and there's promotion in our households today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Shout hallelujah. Father, lean up the ushers. The best is yet. 